Welcome everybody. Thanks for coming. This is the writing studies lecture series called Writing Professionally. And so typically we have um, a panel of professional writers or someone who's in a profession who does a lot of writing and they share their experiences of what kind of writing they do in their industry. However, this time I think you were in for a treat. Uh, we have our own uh, alumni, those that were in your exact shoes, that were in these classes that you're probably in right now, and they pursued the professional writing certificate and have now graduated from COD, and now they're doing all sorts of really interesting stuff. And so we wanted to create a panel of them sharing their experiences, being at COD, being in writing studies, following the professional writing certificate program, and how they got to do what they're doing today. So we have our three panelists. I'm sure you saw the flyer. We'll go in that order. Uh, and then when all three are done, uh, we're going to open up to a discussion. Uh, however, if you have some ideas or thoughts like mid-presentation, feel free to add those questions in the chat. And then when we open it up to the discussion at the end, uh, we can go through those questions in the chat. Or if you wanted to raise your hand, of course, uh, we could do um, live questions as well. Uh, but again, we'll save that again for the Q&A so you can hear each different person's discussion first. Okay, so something like plan. All right. Well, we're going to start off with uh, Danielle Spence, and I'm going to read a little bio, bio of her, and then uh, she'll give her presentations. Uh, Danielle Spence is the Marketing Communications Manager at the West Chicago Park District, where she manages community outreach, strategic marketing, and sponsorship procurement. She is also a marketing and grant writing volunteer at the Animal Rescue Foundation in Wheaton, where she spends her time coordinating the grant process and spreading awareness of animal welfare. In both her work and volunteer lives, Danielle is passionate about creating stories that captivate audiences, bring people together, and inspire change. Hi, everyone. Just give me a moment. I'm going to share my screen. Well, hi, everyone. Thanks for the introduction, Dr. Accardi. My name is Danielle Spence, and today I will be talking about my personal experience at the College of DuPage and how the program you know, shaped me into the writer I am today. So let's start at the beginning of my journey. Uh, my beginning may be similar to many of you. My passion and interest for writing stemmed from when I was a kid. You know, I would write my own stories. And throughout the years, it developed into a very serious passion of mine. So when I was nearing the end of high school, I, I started to ask myself, you know, what career was I going to do once I graduate? What path was I going to choose? And, you know, I put a lot of pressure on myself to choose the right path, you know, quote unquote, right path. And at the time, the only path that I saw with writing was literature, you know, to go down the literature route, to be an author and to publish novels. And, you know, on, on top of that, to be a successful author, it seemed like a one in a million chance. And so at the time, I just thought that that was the only path for me. So I was pretty discouraged. Um, but anyway, I started at COD right after graduating from high school. And I continued to ask these questions, you know, is a career in writing even possible for me? You know, maybe should I drop writing and do something else? Um, There's just a lot of questions. And then I started at COD. So before COD, like I said, I had zero experience. I didn't have any qualifications or certifications. I didn't know what rhetoric or grammar really was. You know, I had just done it personally. So I started at COD like I was a blank slate. And my first class at COD was English Comp 2 with Dr. Accardi. And in this class, I learned about this mysterious thing called rhetoric, along with various, you know, writing theories and conventions of writing. And, you know, the class really taught me a lot of things. And one thing I noticed about these classes were that they were very discussion based. So I was learning from my professors and my peers directly. And another thing that I noticed that was different from, you know, college and high school were the projects. So in high school, you know, you kind of you read a textbook and you write an essay and then maybe you do a quiz and that's kind of it. But it, at COD and especially in the professional writing program, it was about doing and about putting what you're learning into practice. So just for an example, in my English Comp 2 class, the semester long project was to create a movement around the use of plastic bags. And we did this as a whole class. And like I said, yes, we did research and we did read text, but we also worked as a team to create a website and video to argue for a cause, you know, argue against an issue that impacted the community. 
And it was this doing part that really impacted me. So, you know, along with this class, you know, other classes had us, you know, write manuals, write reports, create other videos. You know, these are things that you are doing in the workplace. And so it was very valuable. And then along with that, we were also interviewing, you know, writing professionals and, you know, reviewing each other's work. So all of this really contributed to my growth and experience. So, you know, with this great experience that I was getting, I decided to, you know, go in and pursue the professional writing certificate. And while I was going through the program, I continued to learn about, you know, the different writing genres and how I could use writing as a professional. And, you know, like I said, the, I had so many questions when I started, you know, when I, after I graduated and after taking these classes and starting this program, these questions were getting answered with each and every class. It was like a building block, you know, with these new projects, you know, new things that I was doing, I was challenged in new ways. And it was overcoming these challenges that, you know, just really contributed to my growth. So I pursued the certificate and my path became clear and clear. So I graduated from COD with a professional writing certificate. And this really laid a foundation for me to transfer to the University of Arkansas at Little Rock to pursue a bachelor's in technical writing. And actually, fun fact, COD recently started a partnership with UA Little Rock to help make this transition even smoother. So I highly recommend checking out that program. Um, anyway, I got involved in various writing communities at UA Little Rock, you know, so that I can continue to learn and network other pe with other people and just grow as a writer. So I joined the school newspaper. I was a tutor at the University Writing Center, and I also was uh, on their student-led journal. Um, and also one of the class projects at UA Little Rock connected me with an animal rescue in Wheaton. So, um, you know, it was, it was an awesome experience. And the best part was that I was a fully online student. So I was able to pursue this bachelor's in technical writing and get involved in Arkansas writing communities from Wheaton, Illinois. So it was just an amazing experience. And now in 2023, I work full time as a you know, professional writer and communicator at the West Chicago Park District. And I use a lot of what I learned at COD and in the writing program in my day to day. So for an example, this is just some writing samples that I have, um, but for an, an example, in my professional editing class at COD, one of the projects was to create a style manual. And, you know, basically we worked as a group to create a style manual for an outside organization. And, you know, so in this class, we learned about what a style manual was, how to create one and how to analyze an organization's, you know, mission and goals and all about the organization, how to analyze that and create a product for its employees to use. So it was a very valuable class. And I recently used what I learned in that class, you know, outside of school. You know, I used it for an animal rescue that I'm a part of. I created the style manual for them that is now used by all of their volunteers. So we, you know, we all start in different parts of our writing journey. You may have started just out of high school and are just getting into COD, or maybe you already have an established career and you're just looking to become a better writer. Uh, today, you learned a little bit about my story and how the professional writing certificate worked for me. You know, specifically, it worked for me emotionally, financially, and professionally. Emotionally by, you know, CD, COD was close to home and close to my family, which is really important to me. And there were also online options that, you know, really fit with my schedule. And then it worked for me financially, you know, due to COD's affordable programs and scholarship opportunities. And then professionally by pushing me into the direction I needed to start my career. So my last piece of advice to you is to just reach out and get involved in the community. You know, attend panels like this, you know, just see how you can get involved. You know, ask, you know, talk with your professors. They are fountains of knowledge. They have so many connections in the writing community. So just reach out and ask them how you can get involved or how you can improve as a writer. Or, you know, if you're working, you know, see if your workplace has any associations or committees that they are a part of that you can be a part of. And then also volunteer opportunities. I think volunteering is a great way to get experience as a writer, especially when you know, you're, you're new to it uh, because of the low barrier of entry. So if you're interested in things like animal welfare, um, education or anything like that, just like check out some local DuPage nonprofits to see how you can get involved. Um, and then the last recommendation I have is to connect with me. So if you have any questions about, you know, my presentation or you just wanted to talk through your writing journey, um, I'd be happy to help. And that's it for me. All right. Thank you so much.
Danielle. Um, just a, a few things that she said, just want to spotlight real quick before we go to our next speaker. Uh, so that agreement uh, that we have with the University of Arkansas Little Rock, uh, I put that in the chat and you could see that and you can see the other agreements that we have. Uh, but just wanted to give Danielle some credit here. So Danielle got into the program and it wasn't until then that it was like, hey, um, could we do what Danielle just did with other students? And so we ended up talking to Little Rock and now we formalize this program. And what's amazing is that not only can all of your COD courses transfer to Little Rock, but all the professional writing courses and all the writing studies courses also count for their courses as well. So you're basically getting like two and a half years of work at COD at the COD price for UALR's degree, which is great. Um, and that was, you know, pretty much because of Danielle. And we just met with Little Rock uh, a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about, you know, ways to like improve this partnership. And they just said, send us more Danielles. So, uh, if any of you out there could do that, uh, they would love to have you. Okay, um, let me put the link in again for those who are just coming in now uh, to the sign up sheet. So if you haven't signed in yet, I'm going to put that back in the chat. And so feel free to add your name and information there so you can get credit from your professors. All right, let's move on to our next speaker, which will be Andrea. So Andrea Hamler is a MA student in writing, rhetoric, and discourse at DePaul University. Her scholarship focuses on empowering people marginalized by high school religious groups. She is pursuing the SWAN, which is the Strategic Writing for the Advancement of Nonprofits Certificate at DePaul, alongside her MA. Andrea incorporates rhetorical skills into creative writing and visual art, including two children's books and a fantasy novel. She asserts that stories, myths, and parables are central ways that humans convey truth and morality, and she seeks to use them to challenge oppressive power structures. She hopes that her work will make the world a kinder place for her two young kids. Everybody welcome, Andrea. Like Dr. Dr. Cardi said, I'm Andrea. I completed the professional writing certificate in 2021. Um, and I'm in the MA program in writing, rhetoric, and discourse at DePaul University. Um, so I had taken several classes at COD over the years. Um, I'm an inquisitive person, and I took classes to deepen my understanding of topics that I teach my students as a private tutor. I also took classes simply to learn more about topics in which I'm interested, um, because I'm a big nerd, and that's my idea of a fun time. Um, most recently, before I started taking um, courses in the writing studies department. I had taken creative writing and publishing classes. Um, and then I saw that there was an argumentative writing cl class that was offered. And honestly, I thought it would just help me to navigate some challenging conversations that I found myself having at the time. I thought if I learned to make better arguments, people would understand what I understood and that it would solve those issues. Um, I've since learned that um, difficult contrast Controversial conversations and rhetoric are much more complicated than sound argu than sound arguments seriously presented. Um, but I was hooked on the study of rhetoric um, from early on in that argumentative writing classes. Um, I took the opportunity being like from being stuck at home during the COVID, early COVID restrictions um, to reconsider what I wanted um, in a career, um, and then. The availability of writing studies courses online made it possible for me with a young toddler at home to complete the professional writing certificate and decide what I might want to do for further education um, to make the switch to writing as a career. Um, the, the writing studies program at COD helped me to develop, to develop professional writing skills and the professional writing certificate is a useful credential as I look for writing jobs. In addition, um, I experienced many personal benefits from the writing studies program. I learned rhetorical skills as I practiced using concepts from readings in my writing about complex and sometimes controversial issues for varied audiences. Um, Writing was a part of, a, of several jobs in my past, and I developed these professional writing skills a great deal during my classes for the professional writing certificate. Um, and it didn't take long for me to feel as though I had the power to actually affect the world through what I wrote. I discovered and created strategies to address issues that are important to me. 
the more that I practiced and received specific instruction and guidance on my writing, the more my confidence in my ability to write skillfully increased. Um, during my undergrad degree in the early 2000s, I really didn't have any confidence in my ability to write well, and I chose not to pursue writing at that time because of that lack of confidence. Um, Completing the professional writing certificate, as well as the argumentative writing and advanced comm classes that I took, prepared me to apply for the MA in writing, rhetoric, and discourse at DePaul. Um, I had a bachelor's degree from years ago, but I didn't, so I didn't need to complete a second bachelor's degree before applying to MA programs for writing. Um, since my major was unrelated to English writing, I um, helping the it helped to complete the professional writing certificate, um, just for me to feel like I was ready, and also it looked then it was something that was visible and a, and a credential that I had to um, show that I had studied writing. So um, even though, so I'm, I'm partial to the study or to the study of rhetoric and composition, examining um, in an academic matter, what rhetorical moves are being made in different places in the, in the real world. But it was also important to me to make sure that I would be prepared to get a job where my primary responsibility is either writing or communications with a heavy writing component. Um, the professional writing courses I took with Dr. Grauman and Dr. Accardi really expanded my knowledge and skills that could be put into practice in the workplace. Um, I was familiar with some types of writing that are done in the workplace because of a couple of jobs that I had. Um, and it was really helpful to learn how to communicate even better through the typical documents that I might be asked to produce as a writer in the workplace. Um, so, um, so what am I doing now? Um, so I'm aware that the role, uh, sorry, I'm aware of the role of that writing and rhetoric play in my life on a daily basis in the obvious arena of working on the master's degree in writing rhetoric and discourse, but also, um, in my creative endeavors and in my public life. Um, in the MA program that I'm in, I use a variety of styles and media to address various audiences. The bulk of my writing is still prose in the form of essays, articles, and discussion posts. Um, but I also incorporate artistic elements into multimodal and digital writing. Um, for example, I might make a vid video or photo essay for a class or for one um, project, I even made collages and built a website to put into practice some visual rhetoric and digital writing skills. Um, alongside my MA in WRD, I am completing the SWAN certificate at DePaul. So that is the Strategic Writing for the Advancement of Nonprofits. Um, in classes for this certificate, I practice writing grant proposals, digital storytelling, and content strategy. We partner with nonprofit organizations on some projects. So the actual work that we do can be used by those organizations. Um, we also have opportunities to network with professionals in nonprofit organizations to learn about how their organizations work. And it helps to have, it always helps to have connections when you're searching for a job. Um, so I continue to pursue other projects outside of school work when I have a free minute. Um, I'm a huge believer in the rhetorical power of stories and art. Um, I keep in mind what rhetorical moves that I want to make, even when I'm writing children's books and and a novel, um, I'm aware that art has the power to move and inspire people. Um, so I use various media that you wouldn't necessarily expect to be rhetorical to communicate my ideas. Um, in my public life, I use my rhetorical skills to engage with like-minded people and organizations. Um, last spring, for example, I got involved with Americans United for the Separation of Church and State an organization that works to protect democracy from interference from religion. Um, and then after looking into rhetorical moves made by leaders in high control religions in my academic work, it gives me peace of mind to be able to choose a church where I can see that they make rhetorical moves that encourage freedom of the congregants. Um, so what's next? Um, maybe you've been interested in writing and you're good at it, but you're unsure of whether this could actually turn into a career. Um, there are a number of things you could do with a degree in or training in writing. Um, I'll give a few examples of what fellow students in the MA in WRD are doing from uh, the students from DePaul that I um, 
take classes with. Um, so I have one classmate who works for WTTW, so the, the public radio, or not public radio, public uh, television in Chicago. Um, there's someone else who's a technical writer at an architecture firm. Um, another lady works as a minister and uses the skill she's learning to put together curriculum and sermons. Um, there are several of us who want to go on to get PhDs, um, and some others work for nonprofit organizations like the Alzheimer's Association or um, an organization that promotes adult literacy. Um, some get positions in marketing or communications, similar to what Danielle does. So being able to write and communicate is clearly um, a highly desirable skill in the workplace, and there's lots you can do with it. Um, so my big question right now is what I am going to do with my, my degree. Um, and it's, my problem is that I almost have too many options, um, which is a good problem to have. Uh, I, ideally, I'd like to go on to get a PhD in rhetoric and composition. Um, I feel like my academic work will not be done when I complete the master's degree. Um, and I plan to submit articles that I've written for publication. And there's at least one research project that I could turn into a longer form, um, like a book. Um, what is really important to me um, is to be able to write, to make a difference, which is why I'm pursuing this launch certificate so that I can be prepared for this other really good option of working with a nonprofit to advance their goals through my writing. Um, so yeah, please. So like Danielle said, I'm really, I'm, I'm also happy to chat with you or help you out in any way I'm able. Um, feel free to get in touch with me through LinkedIn or my email address. Um, it might take a minute for me to get back to you because um, I have two kids and I'm always working on something, but I will, I, I do want to, I do want to connect with people and, and help you out if I can. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much, Andrea. Uh, just a, just a couple of things to spotlight there. If you uh, saw the link from before where it had like the, the agreements we have with other universities, DePaul is another one of those that we do, uh, and Andrea is pursuing the master's degree there, but we also have agreement with their uh, bachelor's degree program. And I was just seeing on social media how they have the bachelor's degree and master's degree now as a five-year program. So I know we're not on a math panel, but it seems like you could do your two years here and get a ton of credit at DePaul's program and then go to DePaul. And in three years, you could have your master's degree which seems like a pretty great deal as well. So uh, you can check that link out that explains that uh, a little bit more detail. Also, um, Danielle was mentioning uh, the editing class with Dr. Grauman that's being offered next semester. Uh, both of them were in the advanced composition class that's being offered next semester. So I know we're right around that um, time of like picking classes for the next semester. So some of these classes that they've been mentioning, uh, we're gonna be running again in the spring. So if you have questions, about it, you can ask me, but you could also ask them that they've just been saying as well. All right, so Rodney Fair is the technology coordinator for Power Rogers LLP, a personal injury law firm in downtown Chicago. His management duties encompass telecommunications support, device and application support, user end onboarding and training, litigation support, cybersecurity awareness, and coordination of server and infrastructure maintenance with the firm's managed service provider. He is currently writing information security policies and user end manuals for the firm as part of a new cybersecurity education and training initiative. He will graduate from COD in the spring of 2024. Welcome, Rodney. Thank you, Dr. Cardi. Hello, Dr. Grauman. Good to see you. Um, I'm really happy to be here. And let me see if I can now share my screen. Um, I've been uh, the technology coordinator for Power Rogers LLP in downtown Chicago for the past five years. I've been in IT uh, since it was called data processing when the Air Force dropped me into it in 1978. And uh, I've been a student at COD since 2020. Uh, plan to graduate in 2024 with one class left uh, before I earn my associate degree. And with a professional writing certificate in my tool belt now, I'm revising all my plans for post-retirement writing. So my first plan, uh, which was similar to Danielle's, was to become uh, a fiction writer. 
I was going to be a novelist. I was going to write the great American novel. I was going to do screenplays and copywriting and write movies and short stories. But I had no plan. Uh, I just knew that I wanted to do all those things. And as I took my first couple of English classes at COD, I heard not only about the creative writing certificate, but I heard more about the professional writing certificate. And I was encouraged to explore that uh, by uh, Dr. Cardi and Dr. Grom and, and, uh, and my wife. I decided to seek wisdom and I sought it from uh, my instructors and uh, uh, my wife. Um, my wife urged me to earn the certificate because she believed it strengthened my credibility in the firm as a technology coordinator. And it might also possibly open doors for employment beyond Power Rogers. So I, as I talked with my wife about the program and as I talked with my instructors about it, I wondered exactly what it was that I could hope to learn. I didn't know how that writing would look. I knew I need to do more than write reports and send emails on my job, which was basically all I was doing for a really long time. But I had never thought about things that I would learn in the classes in the, in the certificate program. For example, how my emails were being received or not based on my voice, the content, my language, my perceived tone, and most importantly, my audience. So I had my doubts. In all my years of desktop support, I had documented trouble tickets and composed reports and written daily task logs, but I wondered what I might learn in this program that would help me on my job. Well, as it turned out, I learned quite a bit. In workplace writing, I discovered that writing well requires knowledge of writing and workplace conventions. It also requires knowledge on how to organize content and identifying my intended audience. This was more than just composing emails from the top of my head and sending them whenever I thought I was done typing. I would learn about workplace culture, uh, expectations. I'd learn to craft content and incorporate visuals that informed my audience, but also motivated them to act or to learn something new which is really what I wanted to be able to do at Power Rogers. I wanted to move everyone beyond the 19th century and into different ways of using the technology that was uh, at our fingertips. In technical writing, uh, this particular uh, exhibit, this is a exhibit, this slide is a, sex, is a set of instructions. It's a section of instructions that I wrote on sending a fax from Microsoft Outlook. Uh, now, this is an example of workplace culture, and I wasn't aware of that at the time that I started working on these instructions. For example, in peer review, I discovered that the concept of a fax was foreign to some of my peers in the class. It also taught me that uh, figure one, which you see on the slide, was an effective visual in showing everyone the path to the scans folder on their Windows desktop, which was key in the instructions that I wrote. I later learned from up here in the class that uh, the desktop was a better place for them to save things. I was trying to navigate them all the way to a shared folder on the server. But my end users who were not all technologically savvy needed to know how to find that scans folder in Windows. So this figure on this slide was key to those instructions. The finished instructions, which, which are about six pages long, contain figures one through four and numbered steps rather than bullet points. There's an old saying uh, from long ago that called different strokes for different folks. It basically means that uh, everybody thinks and acts, feels differently. I have several audiences at Power Rogers each with different expectations. But they also process communication differently. Lawyers cross-examine and argue at Power Rogers. I don't know if all attorneys do that, but they do at my firm. Legal assistants wonder, how much time is this going to take? Paralegals are all about the data and they think like programmers and staff and clients vary, but everyone wants clear and concise communication. 
instruction in the three technical writing areas on the left, writing, revising, and presenting, prepared me to structure content classes, structure the content classes on the right. Uh, emails, instructions, tutorials, reports, and proposals. And another example of instructions follows on the next slide. This uh, is something that comes up, believe it or not, frequently in the office. Someone will email me at nine o'clock at night from somewhere in the world uh, or from the road in their car and ask, how do I check my voicemail remotely? Now, in all fairness to, to HR, these instructions are handed out when people join during their onboarding process, but um, they're not always handy when people need them. So I needed to just write a quick set of instructions for how to access your messages from outside the office. Um, but this, what you're looking at right now on the screen is the result of numerous revisions. I tested each revision as a reminder, as a member, rather, as a member of each of my audiences. And I discovered that number two, dial your main company number, had to be made a separate instruction after number one. The earlier version confused two groups of my audiences, paralegals and office staff, who thought that they should perform steps one and two simultaneously when they were all part of the first step. So that revision was key and it was important and I didn't catch it as I was writing everything out um, for my audiences. Um, a proposal uh, that that was just a, that I just submitted a couple of days ago was a recommendation for a new practice management platform that we need to do to use in order to manage the cases and uh, client contacts and statutes of limitations and court dates and everything that pertains to every single case that that we have in the firm. Um, my intention was to summarize the recommendation and what you see on this slide, but to keep the partners reading with the expe expectation that the actual proposal would contain the key points here, a trial evaluation by respected end users, uh, lower costs that then were initially presented by the vendor, <clears throat> excuse me, and a timeline with a monetary incentive. Professional editing was was really uh, one of my favorite courses. I learned how to perform substantive editing in this course, making my documents more effective by making them more usable. And this went beyond basic copywriting, which was, you know, correcting my spelling, usage, grammar, and punctuation. Uh, an example actually follows on the next slide. A phishing email alert that I sent early in 2021 before the professional editing course is on the left. In professional editing, I learned how to spot and remove unnecessary text, as you see in red. A better revision resulting in a shorter, more concise version is on the right. And this was written more for the attorneys who despise wordy documents. I believe this made this phishing alert email more usable and end users could refer to the three clues as they evaluated future phishing attempts. This is what I feel my end users will gain from effective communication. Uh, minimal frustration, lessened anxiety levels, reduced anxiety levels, and, and a clearer focus on tasks at hand. My goal as a professional writer for Power Rogers is to prevent my end users from reaching this poor guy's state. In a high stress environment, concise content and credibility are key in a workplace setting. Writing project four in uh, writing in the pro in the professions was uh, my my final project in this class, uh, and I've added two slides here: the home page banner and my recommendations page for the website of the Episcopal Diocese of Chicago. Now there are recorded notes in each of these slides, but I don't know that they will play. Let's see. What is free to land beneath the photograph is compelling, but they lack a pointer to exposition 
answers to a viewer's probable response of, okay, but how? There are no references to their origin. Nope. Yeah. No links to images, data, or posts which add flesh to these bones and no statement of mission or vision. Instead, just a visual table of contents. I wanted to convey that these three commands on this homepage banner should have had hyperlinks to more resources and more information on how um, how people could in the in the Episcopal Diocese of Chicago could grow the church, form the faithful, change the world. They were action phrases that I thought needed links that would provide more uh, insight. And uh, the recommendations page simply mentions that the welcome page of the diocesan website contains language that could be used to form mission and vision statements for the diocese. There were no visible mission and vision statements on the website in easily uh, navigable locations. And in their present location and format, these uh, they appeared to be more of a, of a church profile, but uh, mission and vision statements were missing. Prior to the program, the professional writing certificate program, working without the benefit of the skills that I acquired, um, the process was endless. It was an endless, breathless run on a hamster wheel for me, and it was stressful. But after the program, having completed it, I feel that I've gotten off the wheel and I can now settle down to a focused and fulfilling experience wherever I go. And that's it. I hope that you were able to see the slides. I have a sinking feeling that they were not uh, as visible as they should have been. We we all saw the hamster bunny. That was uh, okay. Okay. I um I did not provide uh, any contact information. I apologize for that. But uh, well, if we if we um start this discussion here, and if you wanted to add that to the chat, yes, if you wanted the students have that 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 would be great. Okay. All right, uh, a lot of good stuff from Rodney as well. Uh, just to you know, spotlight a couple of things. Um, as you saw, it's what a clear correlation between what Rodney was learning in the professional writing certificate courses and what he was exactly applying to his real life job. And so uh, these two things uh, are connected and are connected for a reason. Um, and I think Rodney really did a great job spotlighting that. So. We're at the part now uh, to open this up to a discussion. You have, you know, Danielle coming to us straight out of high school and Andrea coming to us, you know, with a bachelor's degree already and coming in and then Rodney, who's been a professional in the um, industry for a long time. And so we're all coming from different places, but here we are uh, in the writing studies program. So where are you at and what questions do you have for them? If you want to put them in the chat, that's fine. I can read them. Or if you wanted to raise your hand and we can call on you that way. But open it up to you. I'll, I'll ask something. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. So this is really to any of the presenters, but what was there something that you, like an assignment you did in one of the classes or something you read that you were like, yeah, whatever. And then it became like the most useful gem ever. Or like the smallest little thing that you were like, who cares? And, and now you like use it all the time. I want to speak first and say that I never had a yeah, whatever response to any of the things that we did in any of the other classes. My response was more <laughs> because uh, I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to to learn, comprehend and 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 grasp everything that was being taught. Um, the uh, the most difficult thing for me to embrace in the process was working as part of a team. Uh, in the editing project, um, it, I was terrified that we weren't going to hit deadlines because we were just all over the place. Um, and it's mostly because there were so many different personalities and people involved. So maybe that was my yeah, whatever moment. I remember speaking with my professor about it at one point. I was really a little discouraged and I thought, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. But we we all came together. We we stuck with it. We persevered, and we were we were actually able to get through it. So the yeah, whatever moment turned into a moment of triumph at at the end of the project. I hope that helps. Yeah, thank you. 
Yeah, and I'm going to echo that same thing. So in the professional editing, or is it called ed editing in the professions now, right? So I kind of thought of, um, I, I don't know if I was what, like whatever, but I was like very resistant to working in groups. Also, I kind of thought of writing as a an individual thing. It fits me well as an introvert. I do my own thing. I get it done. I might confer with other people but it's like my thing. So like I worked with like some other people that had really strong personalities and like we had to make a contract at the beginning and it was just like, I don't know. So we, we ended up making something that I was really proud of and it worked well. And it was like learning, I guess I learned more interpersonal skills than I had expected because I just expected to learn how to, you know, do my own editing, but yeah. Thank you. Okay. We have another good question in the chat um, from Chloe. Uh, if you could go back and change anything about your education or career, what would it be? Um, so I would just do this writing program sooner. Um, I, it opened up a lot of doors for me and I am um, glad that I did it when I did, but I, I guess that if I had something to change, that would be it. I would have to echo what Andrea said sooner. Absolutely sooner. I mean, I. I'm going to be 70 in February, so I should have, I should have, if this program had been around 25, 30 years ago, I, I should have been in it then, um, but uh, I, I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change anything that, I, that I've been through uh, to get to this point because it has all brought me here. I might just piggyback off that question real quick, um, just kind of curious for all the panelists, is there anything that you now know like in your careers or in your graduate programs or jobs um, that you wish you would have known as a student at COD in this program or going through this but anything you kind of wish you would have known um, at, you know when all of our audience right now is at COD? Um, the one thing that I that stuck out to me during a discussion in one of the classes was um, one of the students said something about us just being community college students. Um, and I, um, I think that, so at that time, Dr. Cardi, you said something about, I don't remember the wording exactly, but it was basically to not like have like to, to think, take ourselves more seriously that we were college students, we were doing challenging work and the label, um, the way it was used was kind of like not taking ourselves as seriously as we could. And I really think that this, I don't know. So there's nothing bad about community colleges, but I think that it's you can think of yourselves if you're doing these classes and you're you're enjoying them, you're doing well, and then I think you can just think of it as something on the same level as um, like a four year college. Um, so. That's great. Um, I'll, I'll probably um, borrow a little bit of what Rodney was talking about earlier with his wife encouraging him to do the certificate and like the ethos that would that would bring him. Um, I, I feel like the program now has a little bit more ethos and I'm not sure if, if everybody that's here in the audience knows that we won like a national award and then we won a second national award. So this program, uh, both the certificate and the writing studies program is now like nationally known uh, across like the governing boards of education. Um, and the first one was for the best program at a two-year college, best writing program to your college. Uh, and then the next one was just straight up the best writing program. And that was like against other universities. And so, um, so, so keep that in mind that it has like a little bit of a national reputation, but also in addition to the certificate we have, you all do portfolios. And so when you go on the market, you know, you have the material that you've done in these classes to like back up that it's not just like some piece of paper I got from COD that says I got a certificate. It's like, no, here's the writing that I did. And I think Andrew is right when employers or, you know, graduate school applications like look at those documents, um, they, they can see it. You know, this isn't an, a, like a two-year thing or a four-year thing. It's like, this is a good writing thing. Um, so you'll have that in addition to the certificate um, wherever you you go next. And just to go off of that, I have actual experience with that working for my job. So I was still, you know, I think I was fresh out of COD and, you know, I didn't have my bachelor's yet, but I, you, uh, for my current workplace, I applied for the part-time marketing job and 
it was a professional writing certificate that really helped boost my resume. And they also asked for writing samples and I provided those from classes and stuff. So it, it just led me right to where I needed to go. All right, we got a question in the chat um, from Andy about any book or author recommendations. Uh, also, because it's coming from Andy, uh, please follow us on social media because it's run by Andy. Uh, so Instagram, LinkedIn, if you see cool stuff, you have Andy to thank. Uh, but anyway, recommendations, authors, books. So I'm I'm currently reading the Leviathan Wakes series. Uh, I think I don't know what the series name is called, but it's second book in the series, and it's by James Corey. It's a sci-fi. It's pretty good. Um, so the book I put in the chat is so it's called Awful Archives by Jenny Rice. So she's a rhetorical scholar. She wrote this book about kind of the the rhetoric that goes on with conspiracy theories. It's a really, I think it's a really smart but also accessible book to anybody that's interested in, you know, how conspiracy theories work, um, what's actually going on. And then also just, if you're interested in rhetoric, it's an interesting read, so. Jenny Rice is also at the University of Kentucky. Uh, they have an, another excellent program. Uh, and personally, she is hilarious. So if you ever get the chance to meet her or take her classes, mm -hmm. she is great. Uh, okay, um, last question coming from Jack in the ch chat. Is there any piece of writing you've done in the program that you're most proud of? And if so, why? I touched a little bit on it um, in my presentation, but Dr. Carty, your uh, advanced comp to, or sorry, not advanced comp, the English comp two class with uh, when we were writing about the plastic bag use in the community. Um, that was, it was a semester long project and it was a big group project. So we, everyone in the class really worked together. And it was the first time I've ever done anything like that. And so we created these materials to argue and, you know, we were very passionate about it. And then afterwards as well, some of us in the class were able to present these findings at a student symposium. So it was just, I think overall uh, an experience that I'm very proud of. Thanks to CUD. My right. Oh, good. Yeah, go ahead, Randy. Sorry. Mine would be the final project in uh, writing in the professions. It was a it was a semester long project, and I learned so much about uh, about interviewing, about gathering um, discourse data, about artifacts to to build to build the document. And uh, but it was also one that was close to me because the diocese of Chicago was a part of my formation from childhood. Uh, until today. And I had worked briefly for the Diocese of Chicago some years ago, and I thought, oh, this is a cakewalk. You know, I used to work there. I, I know everybody. Well, wasn't the case. Uh, most of the people I knew were gone, uh, and the diocese had grown. And I discovered through the interviews of the staff who were there and, and through piecing together the artifacts and examining the web website that it had changed a great deal. And there was gold there to be mined and uncover. And I just I really loved the process, and 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 it was the first project that I had actually completed uh, solo on my own uh, in in that depth, and so I I I was proud of that. Um, and then mine was also a final project, um, but for advanced composition. Um, so I did a piece about, um, or I, I wrote a paper that examined um, text like tactics of coercive control and how the rhetorical moves that are made sometimes, um, and then applied that to what was going on with um, the political environment. So with kind of the religious things that were kind of enmeshed in like Trump's rhetoric somehow. So it was, yeah, that was, I, I kind of have continued that work in my master's degree, but that was my start. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, special thanks to our panelists. And thank you, all of you, for coming and being a part of this. If you got any questions, you can always email and contact our panelists. So you can always contact me about the program or uh, really anything. Uh, but I think that, you know, the big, I hope the takeaway from this is uh, you can do this. Uh, they did this. So you could do it too. Um, a lot of options out there right now in the world for people who can write well. Um, so take advantage of it and, and see where it takes you. So thanks again, everybody, for coming.